Hey, what's up? John Sonmez here from simpleprogrammer.com. So I've got another interview for you guys today. Uh, a, a guest that I met actually through a mutual friend of ours, uh, which is uh, Noah Kagan. He's been on the on the YouTube channel, on the podcast uh, before, and uh, he's, he's a pretty cool guy. Uh, but uh, Andrew uh, Farabee is, is who I have today, and he's actually uh, one of the, or actually the the host of a very, very popular podcast called Knowledge for Men. And I thought this would be kind of interesting to have Andrew on here just to talk about kind of uh, what he's doing, what his business is, and, uh, and and maybe give some tips to you guys. Since this is, uh, I found that when I looked at his his uh, his podcast and kind of the topics that he blogs about and a lot of the books that he read or that he reads, that it's very similar, very similar to to what uh, what I advise, kind of the the same kind of philosophy in life. And so I thought this would be kind of interesting. So uh, so welcome, Andrew. Yeah, John. Well, I'm happy to be here. And uh, yeah, we met. We're getting tacos with Noah Kagan, and uh, we met and crossed paths. And I th we thought that we could add some value here to your audience. So I'm excited to be here. Awesome, cool. So, um, so tell tell me a little bit. Oh, you got it. <laughs> we actually we actually happen to live in the, in the same location too, right? Because you're you're in you're in PB, right? If I yeah, yeah Pacific Beach. It is a great place to live. It's a beautiful place, and uh, I mean, I was on the beach this weekend, and I am pretty sure it's snowing in uh, the rest of the country. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I know. I was out. I was out running at uh, at five forty five this morning. Wow. on the boardwalk and it was like 62 degrees that's like all right this is awesome it's like wow. january what january 8th so. so are you uh are you in the 5 a.m club in the morning or is that just kind of a random thing there well you know what i actually started i over the holidays i went on this cruise and then i went to tampa and i i i, I got fat in my opinion i got fat. like i <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you're honest about it. I mean, I think everyone did over the holidays, but uh, <laughs> so you're are you on a new mission here, like a 30 day challenge to lose weight or what? Well, so like I'm trying to get back to where I was before the holiday. So I do this thing like I call it force uh, force uh, progression. So when I want to hit a goal and I want to make sure I hit the goal, I do something that cannot possibly fail uh, that has like multiple avenues of, of hitting that goal. That's painful. So so by what I said, it was OK, at least until I hit my goal, I'm going to wake up 545 every single morning. I'm going to run five extra miles on top of whatever my regular workout, you know, my running routine and and lifting routine was. And, and then the idea with that is that like it's it's going to work from two angles. One angle will be that extra calorie deficit will get me closer, you know, maybe 3,500 yeah. more calories a, a week or so. And then also the fucking pain <laughs> of waking up at 545 would be like, yeah, I think I should probably be pretty damn strict on the diet today. Otherwise, this is going to go on for longer. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not a morning guy. I, I think uh, I think I'm supposed to be this guy who wakes up early. But man, I, I I love just waking up when my body says, let's let's go. Let's let's go. Yeah. And sometimes that could be uh, seven in the morning. And sometimes that could be 10 in the after in the morning. <laughs> um, but I mean, I just listen to my body and uh, I work really hard to be able to have that freedom to where no one's really interrupting me uh, at all in the morning. And I don't have to be anywhere and I can create the schedule that I want that works with my body. But man, I have a lot of respect for people who can wake up early and do that consistently with a smile. <laughs> I, I won't say I have a smile on my face. Okay. I'm not necessarily a morning person either, but I did. In fact, that's why I made this like such a high penalty is like because it's so painful. So painful. and then the thing is, like I ratchet it up. So like I have a goal like next Monday, I have to my body fat scale needs to be targeting under nine percent. And if it doesn't, then the mileage goes up to six miles yeah. per day. So yeah. It'll it'll eventually get me to the goal. Like it's it's as long as I follow the rule, there's no way I can't possibly hit the goal. So that's awesome. But uh, but yeah, so let's talk about so what 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 do you do that allows you to wake up whenever you want? Oh, that's a great. Everyone wants to know way. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't always like that. I'd say four and a half. Uh, wow, I guess it's been some time now. Uh, over five years ago, I was working at a, as a retail manager. Uh, I had just graduated college, and I. It was just like really lost and confused. Like, man, I was this rock star in college. I had this great girlfriend and I was like involved in all these different groups. And then here I am. I found myself alone in some, you know, 
in some suburban city and I was just going to work every day, day in, day out. And I really just started feeling like Groundhog Day very quickly. I, yeah. I started to like drive 50, like <laughs> 45 miles an hour on the freeway because I just wanted to prolong how long my commute would take <laughs> before I got to work because I only lived like 15 minutes away. So I'll try and make it like 22 minutes or 23 minutes because I was just like, oh, I just don't want to get there. As soon as I would pull up my car, I'd look at my store and my whole team would be waiting for me to get out of my car. And I would just look at them for like a good 15 <laughs> seconds and just like prepare for the amount of like mental just I, it was just so out of alignment. Like I was going yeah. completely a, a, a path that I knew was not for me, but I was doing it because I know you got to get a job right after college like that. I was just following this path that was supposed to be supposed to make me happy. I thought I ended up going through a breakup with this girl that I was like head over heels with. We had been together for years and I hated my job. So I just was at this point where I was like, I got nothing to lose. So I just decided to quit my job. And I had no plan on what I was going to do with my life. Like I didn't know about right. I didn't know I was going to do this. I didn't have this like battle plan of how I'm going to do it. And I wouldn't recommend doing what I did because that was a really scary place to be with. Like it's super exciting because you just quit your job, but you have no plan of how you're actually going to make income and how right. you're going to live and what you're going to do with your life. So I just decided to go on a journey and I started buying books. So it was like the beginning of my journey. And you could see I have a ton of books behind me if, if you guys are watching this on video. And I would travel around to libraries and buy book used books for 10 cents or a quarter because so many people donate books to the library. Like they actually sell books like in most libraries. And most of those books are personal development books. <laughs> it's like people oh, yeah. give up on those books or they're like business books. And so I, I legit, and this was, I didn't have an iPhone or oh, wait, wait, no, I had an iPhone at the time. Um, I, I remember like, I just went through a list of all the libraries in San Diego, like every little community. And I drove all around San Diego and I had a trunk full of books and I just started reading everything about success, about personal growth, about confidence, about relationships, about how to make money. And I, I was just a kid in a candy store all day. I was reading like like a madman, like a mad scientist. And I did this for years. And obviously this started leading me to want to meet new people and go to like meetup.com. And I right. just started putting myself out there and trying new things, which led me to start traveling the country and going to different personal development events. Some of them really weird, like in the woods, like naked running around and like to just a standard uh, like Tony Robbins event, which is uh, a good event in itself. But wait a that, minute. Hold on. If it, you're like um, you're you're like so, some of them weird and then some of them standard like a Tony Robbins event. So I yeah. so, that, so you must have gone to some weird shit because to most people, yeah. when they go to a Tony Robbins event, they're like, this is some weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think after uh, the first day, you're pretty, you, you pretty much accept Tony. Like, I feel like yeah. Tony Robbins at first, you're like, wow. But I, I was just, I was such a fanboy that I was just, I was just in love with the whole experience. Yeah. But that, that w I went on a journey. I had no yeah. idea what was going to happen. And I started writing about my journey and how I started, was able to improve my life. I first started working on my dating life. That was where I felt the most pain because I thought that I would never find love again. I thought that I would never like have this. I thought I lost her. Like by her, I mean like the only woman in the world who would who would find me attractive and want to be with me like intimately and physically and all that. And the one the one itis, right? The exactly the yeah. one itis. Yeah. And uh, I thought that I didn't know how the hell I would get back out there and start meeting girls. And so I focused on dating. And also a part of focusing on dating was improving my overall life. Uh, but but the reason why I was trying to do it was because I wanted to find love again. And mm -hmm. through that journey, that led me th through a whole series of dating and going out and and literally every single night talking to girls, you know, going to different seminars and boot camps with the wrong people and some of them with the right people and really finding my own groove to the point where I had dated like many, many, many women and many girls at the same time. And now I've been in a relationship for over two years with a really amazing woman, a yoga instructor. It's just, it's incredible. It's kind of like what I wrote down and everything. And then from a business standpoint, like how did that area of my life grow? I just started sharing what I was learning, my authentic journey online, and people were resonating with it. And the podcast came came about because I wanted to capture other people who had gone on a much 
much greater journey than I. And I thought that people should know about these stories because everyone should go on a journey many, many times in their lives. And there's always so much lessons to be learned in that journey. And people love sharing about their story. And so that was the podcast. And it has over almost, almost 5 million downloads. Today. Oh, wow. Nice. And we do. I've written multiple books. Like one of them was The Dating Playbook, which was really chronicling how I went from being horrible <laughs> with women to really finding the woman that I'm really excited about and having a great dating life in between. Um, I wrote a book about breakups because when I was going through my breakup, I could not find a book about breakups that was written by a man and yeah. four men. And there's nothing wrong with the books available, but they were all targeting women. And so it was a different angle. And then I wrote a book about porn um, because porn is just a huge issue for men. And uh, yep. and it was a huge issue in my life that was preventing me uh, from it was probably a, a, a part of why that previous breakup happened. I didn't realize that it was like limiting so much of my connection and emotion. And it, it was a really dark place, but I didn't know it was a dark place. I just thought it was normal. And uh, so I wrote those books and I'm working on other books. I have created many different online courses, all in the personal development sphere. Uh, yeah. And then I do seminars. We have guys come out from all around the world at this point, from Asia to Europe, all around North America, of course, Canada and Mexico. It, it's, it's really insane. Um, I'm really excited for an upcoming event. And uh, and we have a coaching business. So we, we, we have a team of uh, like I, I got to the point where I had so many clients that I had to get help. And so I started hiring coaches who uh, were very experienced, 5, 10, 15 years experience of life coaching to join my team. And then I just continued to put out content, have fun, uh, do the things that I enjoy doing, the things that I'm really I feel good at. And then we have coaches who can help the guys who want to take it to that next level, in addition to the books and courses. So that's like, I guess, a short version of how I went from hating my job to building an awesome business that allows yeah. me to wake up when I want and uh, an awesome relationship. Wow. Okay. I've got so many questions from that. There's so many, so many jumping off points. I want, I wanted to reiterate the, I, I was glad that one of the things I saw on your site and, and you mentioned it was the book on, on porn. This is one of those things that, that I talk about on the channel here and on the podcast a lot, even though it makes people feel uncomfortable is because it, I, I think a lot of guys don't realize how bad of a, a thing it is in their life and how much of an addiction because it because everyone like it, it's it seems it's so you know i i'd say probably like 95 percent of men in the in at least in the u.s are addicted to porn and and they don't think it's a big thing because every quote everyone is uh and and i and don't realize it, it, how much of a problem it is yeah you know some of the interesting statistics around porn is that right now 30 percent of all online traffic is porn uh people on <laughs> yeah the now and it typically will peak higher um you know towards the evening and, and, and late night hours but yeah porn is just one of those things where i don't tell guys that like if you watch it like it's the devil or like it's it's your horrible right. guy or anything like that but i just think men should be aware of what it does and how it can impact your personal relationships and likely when you have great personal relationships both intimately and with friends and family uh your your need for connection is filled and your desire for porn is way less. Like if I put you on an awesome date and like right. you have an awesome, you hang out with some friends after, and then maybe you have like a call with your family member on the way home or something like you're going to come home feeling very fulfilled. And uh, you're, there's not going to be this need for it, although you might be interested in it, but you're not going to crave it. Like, uh, like in my life where I, I would like, I would be driving home and I was like, Oh, I can't wait. Like I want to, I want to watch porn. Like I was really excited. Like, for right. it like it was an event in my in during my day yeah yeah and i found like you know one of the things i would totally agree with you on all that uh one of the things i found like a lot of guys in my audience that have problems you know with uh with with even ever having a girlfriend in their life or even you know what i mean like they, they if they have if they're getting the reward like i think you know tony robbins talks about like getting your basic needs met right and it's right. like if you get it met at a lower level like it's meeting the need but at such a low level that they're never the need is not becoming great enough in them for them to actually get the courage to overcome the social anxiety and approach anxiety and to actually go right. and talk to women and to actually go and create these relationships so because they're getting that need met like they, they this like 
And it doesn't mean that if you stop watching porn, suddenly you're going to suddenly become, you know, a suave, you know, right, ladies man. All. But, <laughs> but it's the first step. It'll give you enough. Like, like you, you now will have no other alternative. Like, how are you going to get this need met? You're right. going to have to like figure out how to solve it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even if you're in a relationship, so even if you're not s single, but you're in a relationship, you could mm -hmm. still be addicted to porn, and and that could be ruining your intimacy and connection. When yep. likely that is that is what you want. I mean, I had I had did a lot of research on on this like just porn, the topic of porn, and um, there were many doctors who would say that porn is more addicting than than heroin. N yeah. Not meaning like it's more damaging, although it could be in the long term, like emotionally, but obviously if you take hair and there's there's a lot of physical damage that it does to your body so it's it's not on that sense but by addicting meaning that uh there's with addictions there's usually barriers that make it harder to get and so heroin is typically a harder thing to get even if you know someone like uh you have to make a call like it's not readily available it's illegal there's a lot of barriers that make it more difficult to get for an addict to be able to do it every day without right. him ruining his life but porn porn's in your pocket right now um literally if, if we we're like doing like like gunslinging like i could whip out my phone and i could start dialing and i could be watching a video within 10 seconds oh and yeah it, it's not going to cost me anything there's no one that's going to tell me i can't do it and also i can do it by myself um which like I'm, i i can easily just isolate myself and so uh like, like heroin uh <laughs> um like you have to whip out all this stuff or you, just there's a lot of barriers. And so this addiction uh, specialist was saying that like the more barriers there are, the harder it is to be addicted. Uh, and the less barriers there are, uh, the easier it is to become addicted. And porn is one of the very few things in the world that has almost no barriers. Yeah, yeah, especially today. I mean, it's it's become it's become crazy. I mean, remember, you know, before I had kicked the the porn habit, like maybe like six or seven years ago, you'd be like, oh, you got to look up stuff in there. You got to pay for something. Like it's like now, but then like within the last like I don't know how long. Yeah, cause, it's everything is free. Yeah, yeah, it's all free. It's a free, free model. It's all uh, just based off ads, and so it. it yeah, if, if a dude's watching porn, and I'm not gonna say you're a bad person for watching it, but I think you should just be more aware of what it what it does to you just like how we didn't know that cigarettes back in the day were really bad for you and now everyone knows and that has created a reduction significantly and the tobacco companies are seeing you know less and less profits in the north america they're they're crushing it internationally but in in a lot of the western world we know that cigarettes and tobacco is really bad for you Exactly. Yeah. 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 These things I try to avoid anything in my life that I consider a crutch. Anything that that helps me to achieve something I want or gives me or fulfills a need of mine, but has a negative that doesn't benefit me positively. Let's put it that way. So yeah. I, cool. So um so one of the things I wanted to ask about. So what got you in your story? What got you to think about reading books. I mean, you you obviously were very motivated and had this idea in your mind if you're traveling around from library to library, but what was the thing that made you say, you know, I need to read read these books? Yeah, it was really my my brother. Um, he's not really into like personal development stuff, but he's a big reader. And so he's just mm -hmm. aware of like different books that could help people. And I just remember I was like crying in bed, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like moping around, just being just just not being alive at all and he just yeah. like threw this book at me and it was a tony robbins book it was uh oh, wow. unlimited power which is one of his nice. earlier books yeah. and um and I, I that was one of the first books that i read front to fr like just the whole book mm -hmm. in, in my entire life like i had always just been skimming books throughout school i never really read books it was always like cliff notes or something and that was the first book where i, I was like wow like there's books out there where they can actually change your life. Like if you apply what's in here, it can change the way you think. And so it created an addiction to self-improvement an addiction to knowledge because I yep. felt like I just knew nothing. Wow. That, that's a good book. A good first book. <laughs> it was <laughs> good to get first you book. on the, yeah, on the journey. Yeah. It was a good first book. And then that introduced me to just all the, I mean, I read a lot of weird stuff and then I really started to figure out like who were the the players, like who is really providing good value here. And uh, just started going through all the classics uh, just the Dale Carnegie, the Brian Tracy, the Zig Ziglar, um, just so many, uh, you, like Robert Kiyosaki, yeah. uh, John Maxwell, uh, St Stephen, uh, Pressfield. 
Press, Pressfield's like the war of art, but uh, Stephen Covey, Covey. Oh, Covey, yeah. Uh, yep, seven, 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 yeah. Highly effective people. And those are all just just great books to uh, to, to listen to. And it, But it wasn't that uh, – like all I was doing was reading because at the same time I was, I was like, my pain was dating. And so I, I was actively working on that area of my life. I wasn't just reading and consuming content because that can be very addictive. And, it, and especially today, I think there's so yeah. much great content, like stuff people used to pay for is now just free on YouTube or podcasts. Like uh, the level of content I feel like is just going up every year I'm, I'm like i don't even know what to say anymore at this point <laughs> yeah and, uh, and, and, and but you you have to at some point just do exactly. uh like this year uh i was like reviewing 2017 and i only read like five books in 2017 when previously i used to read three to four books a month yeah. um it, it's just gotten to a point where like i know enough to it, it's just about execution and and creating at this point yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a pretty avid reader. I do about usually about 75 books a year. I do audio, yeah. mostly audio, like mostly audio, audible. Yeah. So when you see me running on the boardwalk, I'm listening to audible books at 3x speed, and that right. you know. But um, but yeah, books have and and you look at most successful people, they've got a library of books. Like it's just like and, and it's the same books too. It's right. I had uh, you know who Brandon Carter, Brandon Carter, yeah. Brandon Carter, yeah. I had him on on here and you know everyone was like oh these two big guys they're going to be talking about fitness all we did was talk about books because he's such a big reader it's amazing like you you look at the guy and you're like yeah. you don't think so but you know but every single successful person I ever talked to they've always got they can I mean almost everyone's read Tony Robbins you know thinking or rich like there's a you can yeah. rattle off a list of books and every single one of them will have read those books or a majority absolutely. of them absolutely what what top ones would you recommend what's your favorite you know, I get asked that question a lot. And I think it really, my question to that person is like, okay, well, where's the pain? Like, what's the biggest yeah. challenge right now? And that would, that would help me because I've read too many books. So yeah. it really depends on, on like, where's the pain? If it's fitness or health, or is it life or like business or career or women or relationships? But um, I, in, in general, I would just say stick to the classics. I mean, the classics mm -hmm. you can read over and over again. Um, and, and you, you really can't go wrong with, with, with the classics, but some of the highlights, I really like psycho cybernetics. Oh yeah. Um, yep. You can always revisit how to win friends and influence people. Yeah. Um, all the Tony Robbins books are great. Mm -hmm. Um, but one of my favorite books is Osho, which is the courage of living. Uh, he has a book called courage, the joy of living dangerously. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to add that one to my list. Yeah. That, that is one of the, um, because I think that's really what it comes down to. I mean, you, there's so much great content out there, but like if you can't actually apply and put this stuff into play, then I mean, it's just I, I I don't know. It's like almost even worse because you know you know so much, but you're you're seeing so little results. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's it's funny. One of my one of my friends, he he got he was telling me about his book journey, and he got the game right, you know, and uh, he like read that thing cover to cover because you know, it's, yeah, uh, and then yeah, it's an interesting read. Yeah, Neil Strauss. I mean, they're making a movie on that book. With James, oh, really? Uh, yeah, with James Franco is. Uh, I think he's playing Neil Strauss. Oh, that'd be interesting. That'd be, be very interesting. Yeah, I hope they. I think James, James Franco's maybe a little bit better looking than than Neil Strauss. <laughs> <laughs> so it'd be a little bit, yeah, little bit, little well, bit of I a. I don't know what Neil Strauss looked like in. I I think that took place in the early two thousands. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure what he looked like back then, because <laughs> that was a long time ago. That was like yeah, like that was twenty years ago. But yeah. uh, maybe he was maybe he had a full head of hair. But my friend was, you know, after he read it, he was like telling I mean, it's like he took action and he he went out and he would did, you know, for like I think he was doing six, 16 cold approaches per night, you know, four or five <laughs> nights a week. That's a lot of approaches, man. It's like, are you even having a conversation with those girls at that point? But it can be really scary. I, I used to go out every yeah. single day. I think I think I, I would just have Mondays off, but I would go out Tuesday through Sunday. And in some cases um during the day and the night i don't even know how i was getting anything done like I, yeah. I was just trying to i just i just got addicted to it and it was a lot of fun and when you start seeing results you really start knowing what you're doing you start it's it becomes uh it, it can it can get into a dark place um but i think there's there's light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> yeah 
Well, and, and tell these guys that are that are listening or watching, just so that it's not me always telling them the same thing. You know, the the, the rejection to success curve that because they're like, oh, it's it's looks, it's looks, it's looks. It's like, uh, come on, oh, like man. I mean, I mean, anyone I, who's I done this looks, a lot knows it's not. It looks looks are like uh, because I, I I like movies. Do you like movies? I'm sure you like movies. I'm sure everyone likes movies at this point. So my analogy of looks is like, all right, you're watching a movie and they always show the trailers. I love trailers. It's always exciting, but like how often though is, is the trailer equal to what the actual movie is? Sometimes you see a good trailer and the movie sucks. And that, that's usually right. most of the case. Um, and so that's what it's like for a girl. It's like she, a good looks is like, oh, that's a cool trailer. And then when she gets to know you, there's no real substance to you. It doesn't matter how good the trailer was. The movie sucks. I'm going to move yeah. on. I'm not going to give it a great review. It's a bad movie. And so that's kind of my analogy for, for dudes when it's like all about looks. It's like, yeah, you've got a good trailer. You look good and you're going to get a little bit more attention. But if but if you really want like a sat like a relationship or to be able to have great sex, like to be able to see her again and again and again and to be able to develop a real connection, it, it's about the man himself. It's about his character. It's about his personality yeah. will always trump it. I, I did a an interview series where I interviewed um I brought out like 15 or like, I think it was like 18 models, uh, literally just to prove this point. Uh, these were real models that were extremely gorgeous women that like I was shooting at my office. And like, I, I remember people thought I was like doing like a porn shoot. All <laughs> these girls were just flooding into my office. And I was like the only guy. And, um, and so I was interviewing all of them and every single one of them, well, well, said the same thing about the looks and it, it which was basically, yeah, it's cool, but it's not going to like, it's not going to open up the doors to, to my life and my schedule. And it's not going to just allow you to get anything you want. And, and in most cases, women said they have such a higher guard up for a guy who's good looking because they've been hurt by that good looking man mm -hmm. before. And like, sometimes that good looking guy, it's, it's not, um, it's not as easy as you think, like being good looking can almost be a crutch because when you're just average looking, but you have a great personality, you can kind of slide in a lot easier because their guards are down, uh, versus a really good looking guy where you have, um, her guards are up a little bit more because she knows, she knows what's up. So yeah, yeah. you got to squash that good looks. Uh, that's just such like, that is not the case here at all. It helps, but it's not, it's not the case. Yeah, yeah, I've often equated to say that like if you if you do look good actually then you kind of have the bar set here when you first even approach. And yeah, so it's a like higher. Yeah. So it's like now you better live up to that. So you better actually have some game uh because if you don't you're going to look it's it's going to look like false advertising like one, like when those movies like you said where I like that analogy where the the trailer looked really good. Awesome. And now you're really disappointed. You're like shit, that exactly. I wish. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. But if the if the bar's lower, then maybe you got a better shot. Honestly, like if you you know, and and you see it all the time, right? And like I said, and then with my with my buddy, you know, he 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 was facing like rejection like crazy because he was a skinny little Indian guy, and you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but then I, he became the Mac Dad. He, he did exactly. like he, so exactly. I was gonna say I have uh, an Indian like he's Indian and in Pakistani, which I I just think in the Western world is not. Uh, I mean, it may not be the ideal picture of what a woman is thinking however once they get the personality the woman doesn't even really see what the mm -hmm. guy looks like she exactly. just feels like she just like this guy gives me this emotion and i like it and so i want that i want to keep going with this guy i want to keep hanging out with them i want to spend more time with him because it's about the emotion this guy gives me and so overcoming what you look like or like um Cause yeah, I just remember because Pakistani Indian. I mean, we were like at war with like it's not the same countries, but it's the look that might throw women off. Um, but once the substance is on the table, like that's what she really wants. And he's dating. He's dated some in, incredibly attractive women from all ethnicities, like white, like Latino, to all over across the board. And so um, Indians have a great chance. Everyone has a great chance.
Yeah, exactly. Once once they realize that that's the and, and that it's what's important is actually under, learning the skills and and actually facing the rejection and going out and practicing, like yeah, you said. Man. Which which I also think is interesting too. Is I, I find you know it's it's interesting. I've got a lot of friends. You know, obviously you probably do too in the in the pickup kind of community. Not that I that I always like. You know, I think I think though it's evolved. I mean, it's evolved to, from a bunch of canned lines and and superficial stuff to actually what what I was going to say is that like I think a lot of a lot of people in that community or people that guys that had to learn that they actually became really good at self-development and actually improved themselves a huge amount by going through this pain and struggle did did you find that for yourself as well 100 percent. like i i used to have exactly canned pickup lines or i would say the same thing almost every time and it sometimes it wouldn't even make sense because I <laughs> like I wasn't able to like know what to do if I didn't say that line because I would hope she would say something. But what over time is is just you know I learned that just when you, when you are truly just being honest and open, like instead of having this perfect line, like if I'm tired and I'm I'm I had a bad day at work, like I'm not gonna lie and put on this face of like ex excitement. Like I could just tell a girl like, oh my gosh, I had such a horrible day today. Like how was your week? Like just telling girls the truth. Um, cause then she'll follow up with like, well, what happened? And then you, you're just having a real conversation at that point, uh, rather than trying to like take her down this canned approach, but by being real and, and just who you are and authentic, um, it's so much easier. And I just felt like it's such a, it's so much less pressure when I go out to try and be someone, uh, I can just go out and just be myself and, and yeah. there's no, there's, there's not a lot of pressure to be myself. I just go out and, uh, and fun things can happen. Um, when you do just get over that barrier of like, I don't feel like going out. It's like right now it's too cold at night or it's raining. Um, but just being able to go out consistently and just be yourself and, and approach at least three girls per night and try and stay in and just not reject yourself. I think it's easier to reject yourself than it is for a girl to reject you. And so just by going out consistently, it's, it's literally like women want, women are going out too to have fun. If you're bringing that fun, women are going to be attracted to that fun and you can carry that. Usually what happens is phone numbers get exchanged and then you follow up. Yeah. And, and did you, and, and what did you, how did you deal with, did you have a problem with with approaches like uh, most of the most guys I talk to? Their biggest thing is like, oh, I'm just too afraid. I never, I can't go and talk to, to yeah. a girl. Did you have to overcome that? And how did you do that? Absolutely, man. It, it was worse than like I I, I used to train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and like I, I would look at a guy who would be like 250 pounds, and I wouldn't even like flinch about fighting this guy. Um, I, I would just be like, let's go, let's do it. Like I'm ready. But when it came to approaching this little ass girl, I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be, I, I would like be walking in circles. Like I'd be staring yeah. at her like I'm a serial killer. And then like, finally I go walk up to her and then it's, it, it just, you know, I got, you know, probably been rejected like over a thousand times. I, yep. I don't know. I stopped counting after a certain point, but I do remember a lot of the fun experiences I had with women and a lot of just the crazy things that I did that it's like, who would have done that? And just really fun encounters. But how you overcome it um what i think one it helps if you're if you're not alone like if you're really if i used to go out alone and uh, when you're first getting started that's really hard uh, after some time you have experience like you can go out alone especially if you're traveling that's always a fun experience but um when you have someone who is on the same page as you like they know like okay we're both working we're both single or we're both working on our dating life we're gonna go out consistently at least three times a week and we're gonna help we're gonna uh, like you do an approach, I do an approach and we make yep. it like a game like that. Like you do an approach, I do an approach. Sometimes you can put money in the table. Um, like if you, if you don't do your approaches, then like I get the $20, but if you don't have that like camaraderie, so like, cause after you get rejected, um, it's just inevitable, but to be able to walk, turn around and have a smile. And like, there's another guy laughing, um, that that alleviates so much pressure because now you're yeah. just having fun and like yeah, going fun. out you're having fun and you're doing wild things you're saying things you're like pushing the boundaries of your expression of like what you would normally say in most cases and um i i would say having a, a wingman is key who is on the same page and who can equally just take action he does not need to be better than you and he does not need to be very good he just needs to have a positive attitude 
and be someone who is on the same page of like, yeah, we're trying to improve. Like, how can we get better? Like that's, that's priceless for any guy who's trying to work on his dating life. There's a guy with a positive attitude. Who's not going to get butt hurt when, you know, something bad happens. Um, yep. But so who can just, who can just keep rolling. And um, if you're learning from your mistakes, like you, you are actively like looking at just like in business, like if you're, if you're trying to do sales and like, it's not working, like you're going to learn from it so that you can improve. And I think a lot of guys who I hear, it's like, oh, I approached 10 girls a day for the last six years. I'm still single. It's like, damn, like, are you, are you doing the same exact yeah. thing every single day? Because after a certain point, like you should clearly get that this isn't working and you should, you should optimize, you should learn and, and see what is working. You should observe what other people are doing that is working. And you, you don't have to be this multimillionaire. You don't have to be good looking. You don't have to have a six pack ab. Like you, you can get the girl that you want if, if it's a priority and you are, you are progressively learning, you're taking action and you're trying to improve and, and you're, you're just out there. I 100 yeah. percent. I'm not just saying that because uh, I read it, but like it's happened in my life. I've seen it happen with like all of my friends when we first started going out together. We're all now like we've dated so many girls like we've um, w most of us are in relationships. Some of us are still dating like multiple girls. Um, it, it's just incredible, but it's totally true. And if I could hear myself saying this, like I wouldn't even believe it. Like if I was 24 yeah. <laughs> back then. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've I definitely had similar experience. I, I like I think that's some of the best advice I've heard about the approach anxiety, what you said about having the 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 good wing and, and just making it a game and and it's fun. I remember yeah, way back yeah. in the day when when it when it used to be me and, and 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 one of my friends and he would be like, Oh, go, you know, you gotta go, this is your turn. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, there's like there's like uh it looks like that's his her boyfriend or something. He's like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't you just what's he gonna do? He's not gonna punch you in the face. Like if it is just just say apologize and say you have a, your girlfriend's really nice or really hot or whatever. And so <laughs> I'm like, he's like push me. I'm like, well, I guess I gotta do it because this this, you know, this is the contract, right? And so it forced me to do like stuff that I would never ever have done on my own, but because yeah. I had that 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 person with me that was that was, yeah. you know, and we had this agreement. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and and we're having fun, and then it was like, hey, well, you know, whatever happens, it's going to be a really interesting story afterwards to say, you know, this guy punched me in the face. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, some of the best times of my life were uh, when I was out, even when I was like broke, when like I didn't know where I was in my life, like I didn't have all these things figured out in my life. Some of the best times of my life were when I was out there approaching women. Like I can think back to like just the things I was saying that the, just the level of like energy, the serotonin, the dopamine rushing through your head. You're just having so much fun. And most of this I was doing sober uh, because yeah. I felt that you can when you're drunk, like you get sloppy, you might have fun and you kind of accidentally have success. But when you're sober, like it's it's like purposeful success exactly. uh, with women. And, and that's actually how you learn. Imagine if you're trying to learn how to how to play piano like drunk like you're not <laughs> you might accidentally hit some good notes or something but uh you, you want to be purposeful about it but man those were some of the best times of my life and i look back and i just i'm so glad that i did it and those moments like those women that i didn't approach like i i just look back i'm like damn like if i if i would have just been like more like I, I if i could go back i'd be like more like just everyone just just like more crazy more wild like more um, I, I wouldn't want to have like that feeling when you walk away from a girl that you really wanted to talk to. Like, I hate that feeling, right? I hated that feeling. And so I would, I would go back and tell myself like, man, just, just go, just go to town, man. Just have, have a ton of fun. Like, it's not going to matter. Like, you're not going to remember these rejections. Exactly. Yeah. It's the regret that, that feeling and, and not even just regret, but just like of failing yourself, I think of, of, of feeling like a coward is in my mind is yeah. way worse than the, the rejections The rejections. Yes. Like, you know, you could get rejected. And uh, I remember when I was first starting out, what, you know, way back when, but I would get rejected and I would be like lit up. I'd be happy. And, uh, and I was like, what the fuck? Why are you so happy? I'm like, because I, I did the harder thing, like getting rejected. Yeah fuck that but i got i had courage i had balls like i you know to me that's like that's the thing and, and that's what we're that's a lot of, that, is, yeah. that is where it's at i think we all want to know as men that we can just do it like we can yeah like, knowing that you actually went and attempted and you and you fully attempted it wasn't a half-ass attempt yeah. like uh, i was like oh hey blah, and then like it was like you actually were in it you were overcoming challenges like you know people are walking by and like you're actually trying to do it like that's what 
I always just think like, who would have done that? Like after the rejection, like who would have done that? Like, very, like no one look like no one's doing it. Everyone's thinking about it, but no one's doing it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you think all those people are maybe making fun of you, but they're actually respecting you. They're actually, like, damn, that guy's got balls. I wish I could do that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh huh. hundred yeah. percent. And the girl and all her friends are thinking the same thing too. They're like, damn, that guy's got balls. But <laughs> so, so tell me, um, tell me a little bit about when, when you're going through this journey, when you're reading all these books and you're, and you're writing about your, your, journey and i guess at the same time you're improving your dating life how are you sustaining yourself you quit your job there is i think there's because you weren't making now you're making money but where what was happening during that gap a good question uh because that's important so when i knew that i wanted to quit my job mm -hmm. and probably six months before i actually did and so i was reserving like a a fund here, like an account of just like, okay, some shit's about to happen. I don't know what, but I need some money. And I, so I started saving money about six months before I made the decision. So I had this little nest egg of, of money. It wasn't a lot of money. It was, it was $22,000 is what I saved. And, um, and so I had that and I was living extremely frugal, basically, basically like I was, I mean, I was broke and, uh, and then credit cards. I was just yeah. maxing out credit cards, going to events, paying for coaching. Like, I, I just didn't care. Like, I, I, after a certain point, I'm like, okay, I could just sit here and, and make money at this job I hate and be miserable. Or like, I could go on this wild adventure and I'll get into debt. Like, it's not, I think we're so scared of debt, but it's not bad debt. It was the best investment that I ever made, which was I was investing in myself. Like, I was buying books, like, I was going to events, I was paying for coaching, I was buying online courses, I was reading, like, it, it, the travel, all that stuff costs money, but that was the best investment. That was better than my college education. That was the investment that helped me become a stronger grounded man to yeah. really believe in myself. And that took a lot of money. And so I guess you can call it debt, but I was just taking out credit cards because I was just like, man, I'm, I know with certainty that I'm eventually going to make money in the future. So I'll pay it off. And so yeah. that was what I did is I just, I, I went broke and I, I had three credit cards that I maxed out. And I was they're listening. all paid off. They're all paid off like years yeah. ago. I, I was, yeah, I was just listening to Jim Rohn this morning and he said that, you know, if you want to, uh, uh, you know, what you become is what you attract. And uh, if, if you if you want more, become more. And, you know, that's like, I think that's, it's so critical, like, because a lot of people would say, oh, yeah, and I'm against debt, of course. But when you're investing in yourself, you you and you're increasing yourself increasing your, like you're going to attract more like you're going to like that's going to become the the thing that's going to be the thing that's actually going to it's going to it's the best investment that you could possibly make 100 percent. Right? and i wouldn't say that i i invest so much of my because i was investing basically like 80 percent of my income into myself yeah. like it's still it's not like that today but i have yeah. not stopped investing in myself like i am yeah. still going to events I still listen to podcasts and watch YouTube videos. And like I still like am trying to constantly be learning. And and uh, for me, the biggest way that I learn is not. I mean, the books are incredibly helpful. It's helped me so much. But it's really my my network. Mm -hmm. Your network is just the. Uh, it, it will have like one of the greatest like uh, multipliers in your life. Like I think a book is like maybe reading books and that stuff is like maybe one multiplier where it's like improving your life, but having an awesome group of high level men and women around you is like you're multiplying your success by, by so much. Like, I don't know the number, but uh, I would not be where I am today if I did not have other people in my life who are equally on their own journey um, yeah. doing their own thing. And I'm doing my own thing, but when we come together, it is, it is that it's just, it's just so powerful. It's, I wouldn't want to do this journey alone. That would be, um, it, it, that would just be lonesome to be like successful on your own and just not have other people to connect with. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, like one of the big things that, I mean, obviously the books, obviously the self-development, but what really made the difference in the business wise was when I started my a mastermind group and yeah. that, you know, just connecting with those people and sh exchanging the ideas and having the accountability. And then, you know, it, it, it really helped me to grow the business. So hundred percent. Yeah. I try to be the dumbest. I, I have been consistently succeeding at being the dumbest person in the room for like eight years now. 
<laughs> like that is a goal is to try and put myself in rooms that are just way above me. Um, yeah. Maybe not so above me, but definitely above me where I'm, I don't feel like I'm the biggest person in the room. Um, I don't like that feeling. I like to feel like I'm, I'm like this, you know, the younger guy or like the smaller guy, like who's really uh, trying to crush it and move forward. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so, um, so how did, how did you first start making money then from the business when, um, when you, when you did start making money, was it, when you had the podcast, were you doing coaching? Were you doing dating coaching? What was going on that like, how did you kind of first get, I think a lot of people are always interested because, you know, they see guys like you or guys like me that are running businesses that are, you know, six or seven figure businesses. And they're like, well, wait a minute. What, how did it get to when you're making a thousand bucks a month? What did that look like? Yeah, that's very cool. Um, it started, well, what's funny is I started trying to do coaching, but I wasn't getting a lot of traction <laughs> Yeah, um, when I was first starting. So I was like, okay, I'll just, you know, I'll try something else. But my first attempt to try and make money and I can still find it because it's all, I, I went to Craigslist and oh. I, I started writing about like what I can do and like my, my journey. And I wrote this like thing about how I could help guys. And uh, I put it on Craigslist and I think I was charging like 25 bucks for like an hour or something like that. And uh, that was my first attempt at trying to, like make money off of something off of this journey that I'd been on. And it, yeah. and no one got back to me on that, by the way. Um, but it's that's such a good bargain, too, right? It's 25 it, dude, bucks. That was the bargain of a lifetime. Can't even I, give can't, it away. I can't even give it away. I, was, I would have done it for free. Um, yeah. I just I felt like I had to put 25 bucks. But my yeah. first attempt was I created a course about confidence. Yeah. And um, I was super scared to put like a big price. So I put $7. Uh, that was what I felt my worth was. And yeah. I created this course. It was $7. And then I launched it and I made, it was like $182 in one day. And that was basically, um, that was basically the beginning. Cause once yeah. I figured out how to do that, I was like, wow, like if I could do this like a couple times a week, um, I'd be okay. I'm not making a lot of money, but that's pretty cool. And that was the best money that I ever made. It was like 180 something dollars. Because it just proved that people find what I am saying valuable. And that yeah. gave me the confidence to continue. And then uh, two months later, I oh, did. Once again. I just wanted to clear up for people that are going to wonder. Uh, so you launch it, you launch it to your email list from your blog. Yeah. So I had, I, I was, I had been putting out content for quite some time. Um, I, it had probably been at least a year of me just putting out content before yeah. I had ever given or asked for a dollar. And okay. uh, I had a MailChimp. I forget. Yeah, it's called MailChimp. That's what yeah. I used to use for email marketing. And I only had like, I, I probably just had like under 500 people who were following me. And uh, and I just emailed them a link to the course. And it was like some service that would auto, it would, you can pay the service and then it would give them the video file. It was like, it was, it was really old. And uh, yeah. yeah, and it made $180. Three months later, I launched another program uh, which was more about like life. Like I talked about health. I talked about dating I talked about wealth. Like I was just trying to come up with anything that I felt would add value and be worth yeah. someone's money. And I sold it for $67 and, um, it was called like seven days to crushing your life. And that within like a two or three day period I had made, it was like $4,600. Oh, wow. And so that was, that was a huge turning point for me. And then from there, it just, it, I mean, I could keep going, but it continues to escalate until we hit, seven figures. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. And then, uh, and, and with your podcast now, like fast forwarding to today, man, I was looking through your, your podcast episodes. I've listened to, to some of them, but I was looking through like all the people that you've had on this podcast. And these are, I mean, they're, it's awesome. It's like a ton of people that I've either read their books that are some somehow in my network or, or people that I consider mentors or highly respect. Like you've got You've done a really good job of like getting like awesome. I mean, James Altucher. I mean, I, I could just like this is a huge list. So uh, how how did that how did that work? Like, how did you get those kind of caliber of people on there? And and, and what and how do you decide who to who to bring on your podcast? Oh, those are good questions. Um, to tell you the truth, like i'll I'll give myself like I did enter the podcast world at a pretty good time, which was about five years ago. Uh, I think entering now it can still be done. There's definitely still opportunity. Uh, but 
I think five years ago was was a good period to to launch. So I will say the timing was was pretty good because podcasts were really starting to soar at that time period. Yeah. Uh, the second thing was I leveraged my existing network uh, to get started because I started out with just interviewing my friends, mm. and then my goal I called it climb the ladder is like I try and just get someone who's ten percent better than the last guest, and I would be relentless with making phone calls out like. I watched The Wolf of Wall Street, uh, the movie yeah. with Leonardo DiCaprio about Jordan Belfort, and I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to get this guy on my podcast. Literally all week, I just spent trying to figure out how to get this guy. On. I was like hitting him up on social media. Yeah. I was like emailing him. I was calling like old companies he had consulted for. Like I was just on a madhouse. And um, and I got him. Within a couple of weeks, I had Jordan Belfort on my show right after wow. The Wolf of Wall Street came out. Um, like I saw Kevin Harrington, who was a shark tank judge. He's the founder of like as seen on, like he basically created the infomercial. Um, he's like net worth is like over 400 million. This was like one of the bigger guests that I got. And, uh, he was speaking at a conference and I, I like Jason born him by like, like, <laughs> w like finding out where he would be and like, you know, going to the back and like figuring out that, like, I could tell like, this is his car. Cause it's suit and there's like security and it's super nice. Um, so I'm like waiting in between the car and when he's going to leave the stage. And I just, I just, <laughs> I just, wow. I just like, there's all these people attacking him and I, I'm yeah. in there too, like telling him, uh, I'm trying to sell him on my podcast. And, uh, I got him on my show, even, even though he said, yes, it took me like three months to get him on. So it's just like being relentless. And then, constantly thinking how can i get someone who's 10 percent better and yeah. and that was my mission though like for a lot of people who have a podcast like that's not their mission like their mission is to do something else and they have a podcast that will support that something else but for yeah. me it was i'm going to create a badass podcast like that was my mission there was no money to be made here i just wanted something that was super I just wanted people to say, how the F did Andrew get this guy? Like yeah. the, whole, the whole time, this was like years ago when I was literally interviewing these ultra successful people at my mom's yeah. house. Like I'm like telling my mom to, to keep it down. And uh, cause I'm talking to someone who like changed this industry. Um, like you see that guy on TV, I'm talking to him. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, this is, this is, funny. This is awesome. I just want to go over some of these people real quick for for the, for those of you listening or watching. Like, go subscribe for for to Knowledge for Men. I mean, episode two, he had Ross Jeffries. That's the I don't know if you guys know, but he's like the godfather of seduction of the seduction community. All all that fast that seduction, like way back in the way, way back in, in the way. Uh, let me see who else. Uh, uh, Car Carlos Zuma again, another one of the big yeah, kind of know. classic. Jordan Jordan Harbringer, who most people don't know, you started off doing dating. Like, I mean, now he's yeah. got one of the most popular podcasts, but he was he used to sell courses on pickup. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the Art of Charm used to be called the Pickup Podcast. Yeah, 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 amazing. They um, changed the name. James Altucher. Um, gosh, uh, shit. Uh, Jordan Becker. <laughs> I mean, Joshua Becker. Uh, T. Harvey Ecker, you know, this uh, uh, millionaire. millionaire mind. Yeah. Uh, gosh, who else? Let me see some of these guys on here that uh, let's seek out. Uh, Ezra Firestone, he's on uh, in, you know, just a marketing genius. Uh, yeah. And Jordan Belford, of course, you, you mentioned uh, Carol DeWick, Mindset, you know, uh, Mark yeah. Manson, Mark Manson. I mean, damn, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've interviewed him three. I've interviewed a lot of those guys multiple times. And, um, and Mark Banton has been a, a really interesting guy to have on the show. I've, I've had him on three times and, uh, uh, just interviewed him at different points in his career and he's been doing incredible work. Oh yeah. Yeah. His, his book that, um, how to, the subtle art of not giving a fuck is like top yeah, in the models, list on audible models was very influential for me because it was, oh, like, it was a good book. Yeah. It was a different approach to what everyone else was saying. And, uh, and I, I like when I read that, I was like, thank you, because I always wanted to feel like I could just be myself with women rather than trying to be perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I could go on. I mean, there's a ton. Jack Donovan. I like that. Uh, that you, The Way of Men, which a, what a really good book, you know, pivotal book, especially for masculinity. Yes. Uh, yeah. So many of these really good guests. Uh, Ryan Holiday, one of my favorite authors. And uh so yeah, so you guys, you know, go through. I'm gonna go. Oh, wow, you got Dan P Pena. <laughs> Dan Pena. Oh yeah, yeah, Dan Pena. Yeah, man. Some, I, I I used to be like this was all I did. I I don't do this 
yeah. uh, as much anymore. Like as you start go- getting up to the last like hundred episodes, like it's there's still a lot of really good episodes, but I, I don't necessarily spend my time trying to find that next guest anymore. Like I have someone who does it for me and, and he's not going above and beyond like, you know, like he's not like calling people up like 10 times like I was. Um, so we're still getting good guests, but it's not my main focus as much anymore. But it was a period because I've done over 400 interviews and it was one of the like, I, I just can't believe I did it. Like I, I can't believe I did 400 interviews. It was so it was so challenging. <laughs> yeah, like, no, it's like, awesome. I mean, it's like I can't believe I actually did that. And that's what's cool is just being able to look back and say, like, I can't believe I actually did that. And I'm not done, but um, we're, we're not moving at the rate at which we used to. Yeah, no, I mean, even you're recent. I mean, I just saw Dan Millman on there. I was just yeah, watching Millman. Way of the Peaceful Warrior last night. Oh, nice. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dan Millman's awesome. That was that was a great yeah. episode. Too. Yeah, you got uh Lewis Howes on there too. His yeah, so. that was a good one. Yeah, the, we talked about his latest book, The Mask of Masculinity. Yeah, Dan Martell. He's a he's a buddy of mine. So, yeah, yeah. So really cool. So awesome. So um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I, I think um, man, I, I appreciate you providing the value that that you have here, and I I hope that uh, that uh, that a lot of a lot of people that are listening to this or watching this go and 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 go to your go to knowledgeformen.com. I'll I'll put a link up here i do this little point thing where a link shows up <laughs> so or click the card you know or, you know and um or in the description below or just go to knowledgeformen.com and then go in and your your podcast player whatever you use i use uh which we call it uh, overcast but uh, go subscribe to knowledge for men and uh and yeah and check out maybe check out some of the some of the books and stuff uh, i think those those are good especially the one on porn i think that would help a lot of you guys so Awesome. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been uh it's been fun just chatting, diving in on the story and learning more about yourself too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Let me know also if you ever want to go for a run. <laughs> I'll have to go down go for a run. Oh man, I actually too. man, I, I can't run. I actually I I I damaged my knee. And so I have Oh a, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So actually, yeah, I remember we 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 I, I'm seeing we had a bunch of like uh I just saw him a couple of times and then now I have a surgery, uh, I think in two weeks. Okay. Okay. Well, hopefully, so, yeah, hopefully it's going to be some better. time. Uh, it's going to be some time, but anyways, man, it's been a pleasure, uh, being on your show here. All right, Andrew, take care, man. All right. Awesome.